G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller here for Weaver Leather. You know, it's a bit of a different world now than it was uh, two weeks ago, and, and I think you can look at any particular situation as a good thing or a bad thing, and I try to tend to look for the good things in situations. So, at the moment, if you're like us here in, uh, in California, I think most of the country and most of the world is that way, we're in, we're in shutdown, we're, we're locked in at home, and for those of us lucky enough to be locked here at home with our horses i've got some turned out loose in the arena right here i think it's an opportunity to work on something that a lot of us uh, sometimes feel we don't have the time to work on we always want to get things done with our horses but i really think there's a there's a reconnection part at the beginning is and that's something i think we could all work on and we all need with our horses you know back when i was training horses for a living um mostly performance horses mostly reining horses you have to you have to be able to get those horses to connect with you in order to train them that's just part of the training you've got to get them to connect with you and sometimes you get those horses that won't really connect with you and i found in the past the best i could do with those horses was make them obedient but i didn't really feel like i i had the whole horse and what i realize now is what i was missing was me connecting with them so in order to get them to connect with you some you don't have to but some of them you have to connect with them first and i think they're kind of the outliers i really believe now connecting with all of them makes things better and so if you are a person who has a uh, you know a competition goal or a trial riding goal or whatever it is goal and you're always working towards that goal and, you're not, and you have a hard time getting there I think now maybe is a good time to step back and work on that um, connection with your horse speaking of connections with horses that's Sherlock there who's the horse who sent me down this whole path a number of years ago so Sherlock came to me uh, he's a very 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 athletic reining horse could do some really amazing maneuvers but he had a level of tension I just couldn't I couldn't fix and what I realized now was I couldn't train it out of him and what I've realized in the years since then is is what was missing with that horse was relationship and I, I tell you what I about two years ago I had a really amazing experience at a clinic in Texas with a Mustang that's kind of the beginning of this whole thing and so quick story this Mustang came to the clinic and he's nine years old been ridden for six years but he has a random bolting issue and bolting is not that hard to solve if you can figure out what causes the bolting but if you can't figure out the cause you can be kind of stuck and uh it was a three-day clinic the first day i don't rem even remember the horse that's how non-eventful it was you know we did some groundwork the first day the second day we were doing some groundwork with him and his owner said so she was walking down his side and just asking him to disengage just disengage his hind end over and she was walking down the side of him and every time she went to walk down he started to block her out with his head and in the past i would have just put my hand under his jaw so excuse me i'm going down this side but i was i'd been you know messing around with listening to them more and so what i did with this particular horse was i went to walk down beside him and as he turned to block me with his head i stepped back and i waited and i waited for him to show me some sign of relaxing um, then i did it again then i did it again and i did it again and after a while he would let me down that side so i didn't really train him to do anything all i did was i let him know i see his concern uh, then all I did next was I went to put my hand on his neck and as I did he raised his head up a little bit and his eyes stopped blinking so I just pulled my hand back and waited for him to relax before I tried again and then you know five or ten minutes later that bit worked too so now I can walk from his front around to his side he doesn't block me out he doesn't raise his head up when I go to touch him then I worked on the disengaging and it was all good I went back to the front came around the side could disengage he seemed fine and so I handed him back to the owner and, and she said, what do you want me to do now? And I said, oh, just, you know, just hang on to him and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, she hung on him for about 10 minutes and then I heard this collective, <gasps> this gasp from the, the, everybody at the clinic. And I turned and looked and he buckled the knees, lay down and went to sleep. And then he had a roll, got up, lay down, had a roll, went to sleep and stayed passed out till lunchtime. Like slept for like an hour and a half. And that horse, she told me, had, she'd never seen him lay down in the six years she's had him, except one time she saw him laying down way out in the pasture. And when she showed up, he jumped up again, but he'd never really laid down. 
Uh, so that was the second day of the clinic. The third day of the clinic, we came back in and she said, what do you want me to do? And I said, oh, just hang on to him and see what happens. And he, after about 10 minutes, he lay down and went to sleep till lunchtime. Like, slept for four hours, totally unconscious, never lays down. And it was quite profound, the change in this horse, and we didn't do anything. And I came home from that clinic and I researched a bit more about horse sleep habits. And horses need, you know, we all know horses can sleep standing up, but horses need about half an hour of REM sleep a day um, to reset themselves. And they can only get REM sleep laying down and they can only, they will only lower down if they feel safe. And so that's, you know, what I did with that horse was gave him a feeling of safety because I was paying attention. I was listening to the little things. He went to turn his head and instead of me saying, I didn't even see that, I've got something else on my mind, I said, I see that and I stepped back. So it was the simplest thing, but it had the most profound impact. And the impact is so profound that here it is almost three years later and he hasn't bolted since. So, you know, this is so far beyond training. And I think we have a bit of a gift right now, like I said, with this coronavirus, where we're stuck at home and don't have anywhere to go, that we can take a step back and do some of these small things. You know, if you think about a horse's sense of safety, what makes them feel safe in a herd? There's a bit of a herd over here behind me right now, I think. Um, what makes them feel safe in a herd is not that there are members of the herd who do push-ups and do karate and are gonna protect them. What makes them feel safe in the herd is the herd sense of awareness, okay? They don't have to be on the lookout in every single direction because, you know, if something comes at us from that side, that side of the herd will notice it and then the energy will change. I will feel that energy and then we can all run off if we have to. And I really believe that doing little things to let your horse know how much, how aware you are. There's an old Ray Hunt saying that says they know when you know and they know when you don't. And uh, I always thought that saying meant they know when you know what you're doing and they know when you don't know what you're doing. Basically, they can tell a greenhorn from a mile away. But um, a few years ago, I read an article by someone who spent quite a bit of time with Ray Hunt. And he said, when you were around your horse, you need to be aware of what his ears are doing and what his eyes are doing and what his nostrils are doing and what his muzzles are doing and what his neck's doing, what his breathing's doing, what his feet are doing. Are they square? Are they brace like that what his tail's doing is it up is it down is it clamped is it relaxed and you need to be aware of all those things you know you need to know what all those things are doing because they know when you know and they know when you don't so they know when you are present and they know when you are not and i really think that being present around horses is probably the biggest thing that gives them a sense of safety and if you think about that mustang you know he didn't feel safe which is why he had those random bolting things and he hasn't randomly bolted since and so what i want to do here is do a series of during this coronavirus lockup that we're currently in i want to do a series of little videos to show you different ways you can different things you can do with your horse to connect with them and the very very first thing i'm going to suggest which is the simplest thing of, of all is to go near your horse and do nothing. If your horse is kind of a standoffish sort of a horse, um, hard to catch those sorts of things, go out in their pasture and just sit down. Take a book to read, cup of, take a cup of coffee, go out there and do your guided meditation if you do one of those. Just go out there and do nothing for a few days. You know, your horse will be so used to you showing up there and having an agenda and we're gonna try and catch you and I'm gonna do this and do that. Um, if you have a horse that tends to be a bit pushy or those sorts of things, you can do it from outside where they live. You know, wherever they live, just go and, because the thing we're trying to do with this first exercise is get them used to you being around without expecting anything. So just go and, hey Sherlock, just go and sit there and, um, and don't and don't do anything that's 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 the first thing we'll get to we'll get to some of the exercises in a bit but that's the first one i want you to do is just go and hang out with your horse not do anything and uh just give them the idea that every time you show up doesn't mean you're you're after something that i think that's the first part of the whole equation is just letting them know that you know you don't necessarily need something every time so Give that a bit of a try, uh, either in, in with your horse or outside your horse's pen. And then uh, probably tomorrow or the next day, I'll, I'll post another exercise you can do and we'll slowly build on it and see if we can get, uh, 
you and your horse have a bit of a reconnect during this time where we're at basically at home reconnecting with uh, ourselves and reconnecting with our families. <laughs> <laughs>